Bonjour les élèves, aujourd'hui on commence la leçon 18, un vrai sportif. A true or real athlete. Uh, here are the learning targets. I can refer to places using the pronoun I or there. I can use expressions of time to say how often people go uh, places or do things. I can use un to refer to some of something. Example, a sport, a food, etc. So this is a dialogue that we will go over with a, a different activity later on. Uh, but let's examine le pronoun i, the y pronoun, the i pronoun. Uh, here is a little uh, dialogue between these people uh, on the beach or in an, on the pool. Alors, tu y vas? Are you going to go? Or are you going to go there? Or are you going to go? Oui, j'y vais. Yes, yes, I'm going. J'y vais. Note the use of the pronoun, of the pronoun I, which means there, in the answers to the following questions. Tu vas souvent à la plage? Do you go often to the beach? Oui, j'y vais. Souvent en été. So, I replaced à la plage and we placed it before the verb vais. Je vais, j'y vais. I go there, before the verb. Tu vas au club de sport le soir? Do you go to the sports club in the evening? Non, je n'y vais pas. No, I don't go there. I don't go there. So, I is still before the verb, but uh, ne and pas are uh, around I and V are, are around the pronoun and the verb. Est-ce que tu vas chez ton, chez ton copain? Do you go or are you going uh, at your, to your friend's house? Oui, j'y vais assez souvent. Yes, I go there often. Est-ce que ta raquette est dans ta chambre? Dans ta chambre uh, means in your room. And the uh, question means, uh, est-ce que ta raquette est dans ta chambre? It means, is your racket in your room? No. Elle n'y est pas. So, elle refers to ta raquette. Elle n'y est pas. It is not there. It is not there. So, again, I is just before the verb, right before the verb, and ne and pa together surround or around the I and the verb. Tu es allé en France? Oui, j'y suis allé. Est-ce qu'Eric est allé chez son cousin? Non, il n'y est pas allé. Il n'y est pas allé. So we have il, uh, il n'est pas allé and then we place the i before the verb. The pronoun i is the equivalent of the English there. It replaces names of places introduced by prepositions of place such as à, en, dans, chez, etc. So notice here we have the a, here we have the a again, uh, but it's uh, uh, the combination of a plus le, which makes o. Here we have she, here we have a, and here we have she. Okay, so uh, a little review of the les pronoms objets, the object pronouns. We have the direct object pronouns, le, la, and le, which means him, her, it, them. We have the indirect object pronouns lui and leur, which means to him or to her or to them. We have the, uh, 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 the indirect object pronoun i and the object pronoun en. I means there and en means some. Okay. Let's look at the slide. Like other object pronouns, E comes before the verb, except in the affirmative command. So, note the word order in negative sentences. Je n'y vais pas. Je n'y suis pas allé. Je n'y vais pas. Je n'y suis pas allé. So, here we have the verb in the present tense, and E is placed before the verb in the present tense. Et ne pas are around both. Now, here we have, in this sentence, je n'y suis pas allé, we have the verb in the passé composé, je suis allé, in the form, affirmative form, and then, uh, so je suis allé, 
And then G sui alle, the E is placed before sui, before uh, the auxiliary verb. And then ne pas around the first uh, verb or element of the passé composé, which is the auxiliary verb. So it comes out to je ni sui pas alle. Note the position of E in affirmative commands. So here the order changes. There is liaison or liaison, or liaison between the verb and E. On va au stade. Uh, should we go to the stadium? Oui, allons-y. Yes, let's go. So we know that E replaces au stade, but where do we place it in the command form? Allons-y, let's go. There. Uh, we place the verb in the command form or imperative and then e comes after the verb and we have to place the hyphen or uh, uh, the, li uh, the liaison allons-y uh, je vais à la bibliothèque should i go to the library oui vas-y go there vas-y so here again e is placed after the verb the expression vas-y is used to encourage people also vas-y go on go ahead or keep going vas-y but don't forget to make the liaison the pronoun uh, e may also replace a plus noun designating a thing to joue of, of foot so here we have um, a thing, um, and there's a in front of it. A plus le equals o. Tu joues au foot? Oui, j'y joue. J'y joue. So you put the e before the verb. Tu réponds à cette lettre? A plus noun, right? A plus noun is replaced by e, and then you can reply. No, je n'y réponds pas. I am not responding to it. Note the following conversational expressions with E. Vas-y, go on, go ahead, keep going. Of course, you should repeat those expressions when you hear me say them. Uh, pause and repeat to get some practice for pronunciation. So we have vas-y, we have on y va, on y va, should we go, are we going? Allons-y, let's go. So let's look at quelques expressions de temps, certain or some expressions of time. We have souvent, souvent. So the translations are here. I'm going to read them and read the um, uh, sentence that they are used in. So for you, you should repeat the expressions and the sentences. Souvent. L'été, je vais souvent à la plage. So souvent is an adverb. Uh, it never, it's like an adjective, but it never changes. It, uh, it's invariable. Uh, the gender and number of souvent doesn't change and since it describes or qualifies a verb we should place it after uh, the verb like this je vais souvent à la plage quelquefois quelquefois je joue quelquefois au volley de temps en temps de temps en temps je vais de temps en temps à la campagne parfois je vais Pardon, here, let me find the slide again. Here we go. Parfois, je vais parfois, je fais parfois une promenade à vélo. Rarement, rarement, je vais rarement chez mon cousin. Ne, presque jamais. It is like ne, pas, but we replace pas with presque jamais. Ne, presque jamais. Je ne vais presque jamais au théâtre. So let's look at the pronoun en. Note the use of the pronoun en in the answers to the questions below. Tu fais du jogging? Do you play, do you jog or do you do jogging? Oui, j'en fais. So what did en replace? It replaced du jogging or de plus le plus jogging, du jogging. Uh, vous avez fait de la gymnastique? Oui, nous en avons fait. Oui, nous en avons fait. Avons fait is a passé composé au faire with nous. And then en replaces de la gymnastique and is placed before the helper verb avons. Tu veux de l'eau minérale? Same thing here. Tu veux de l'eau minérale? Oui, merci. J'en veux bien. J'en veux bien. Uh, would you like or do you want some mineral water? Yes, please. I uh, would like some or some of it. J'en veux bien. 
Tu as mangé les, des spaghettis? Oui, j'en ai mangé. Yes, I ate of it. I ate some of it. Tu ne fais pas de ski? Do you not do ski? Or you do not do ski? Right? Tu ne fais pas de ski, n'est-ce pas? Non, je n'en fais pas. Non, I don't do it. En fait. En replaces de ski. Tu ne veux pas de frites, n'est-ce pas? Tu ne veux pas de frites, n'est-ce pas? Non, je n'en veux pas. Let's look now on this slide uh, at the position of en. Like other object pronouns, en comes before the verb, except in affirmative commands. Let's look at the first example. Liaison is required after en. When the verb begins with a vowel sound, like this, j'en ai, j'en ai, I have some, j'en ai, tu n'en as pas, tu n'en as pas, you don't have any. Note the position of en in negative sentences, je ne fais pas de sport, je n'en fais pas. So it's before the verb and uh, ne pas surround en and the verb. Je n'ai pas acheté de pain. I did not buy any bread. Or you can say, I didn't buy any. Je n'en ai pas acheté. Je n'en ai pas acheté. Note the position of en in affirmative commands. There is a liaison between the verb and en, like this. Fais de la gymnastique. Play gymnastics or do gymnastics. So, de la gymnastique could be replaced with en. And then it moves after the verb. Fais-en, fais-en, do some of it. Prends de l'eau minérale, take some mineral water, or prends-en, prends de l'eau minérale, prends-en, take some of it, or take some. Note the position of en with il y a. Est-ce qu'il y a des pommes? Are there any apples? Oui, il y en a. Yes, there are some. Oui, il y en a. So, en replaces uh, des pommes e, and it's placed before the verb because a is the verb and it's placed before the verb. Il y a means there is. Il y en a, there is some. D'accord? Non, il n'y en a pas. No, there is none. Il n'y en a pas. Il n'y en a pas. So, uh, the pronoun en replaces du, de la, or de à l'apostrophe, or de, et or de, de apostrophe, plus noun. D'accord? So, let's look at these examples. Je voudrais de la limonade. I would love some lemonade. J'en voudrais. I would like some. On a acheté des croissants. Uh, we bought some croissants. Uh, on en a acheté. We bought some. Je ne veux pas de fromage. I don't want any cheese. Je n'en veux pas. I don't want any. I do not want any cheese. I do not want any. Let's do a language comparison now. Le pronom or the pronoun en is often the equivalent of the language pronoun some or any. While these pronouns are sometimes omitted in English, en must always be used in French. Like this, tu as de l'argent? Do you have any money? Oui, j'en ai. Yes, I have some. In English, we might say, yes, I have, but in French, we have to say, yes, I have some. Yes, I have some, except that some is placed before the verb, before have. I, some, have. <laughs> this is the order if we translate it from French. Or, non, je n'en ai pas. No, I do not have any. D'accord? So, let's look at E. E replaces a, chez, sur, dans, en, plus a place. And this means there. And a, uh, it also replaces a plus a thing or an idea. D'accord? Now, en replaces de la, du, des, plus noun. 
and it means some or any, and it replaces expressions of quantity, expression de quantité, un, une, deux, beaucoup, un sac de. It replaces also de plus a thing, and expressions with avoir, être, uh, and adjective, plus de, or parler de, or se souvenir de. Uh, en replaces also de plus the name of a place from there. And uh, so if a, sent if a sentence has both E and en, this is the order. We start with E and we end with en, and it sounds like E en. <laughs> so here we have en, and then en replaces de plus something, while E replaces a plus a noun. And let's look at the new vocabulaire. Pour exprimer son opinion, to express your opinion, you can say à mon avis, à mon avis. À mon avis, le français est une langue facile. Répétez, s'il vous plaît. Selon moi, selon moi, répétez. Selon moi, le rugby, le rugby est un sport trop violent. D'après moi, d'après moi, d'après moi, la natation est un très bon exercice. Je pense que, je pense que, je pense que le jogging est un excellent sport. Je trouve que, je trouve qu'on ne fait pas assez de sport à l'école. Répétez. Je crois que, je crois que, pour rester en forme, il faut faire du sport. Penser, to think, and trouver, to find, are regular ER verbs. So they're conjugated like any uh, regular ER verb. So please uh, make sure to memorize these expressions. Let's look at the verb croire right now. So croire means to believe and it's uh, conjugated like so in the present tense. Je crois. Répétez. Tu crois. Il, elle, on croit. Nous croyons. Vous croyez. Il et elle croient. And the passé composé is conjugated with avoir. And the past participle is cru. J'ai cru. I believed or I thought. J'ai cru. D'accord? So, uh, mm -hmm -hmm. vous et le sport. Here is an activity that you might be assigned to do with your um, classmates. So, we come here to the end of uh, Leçon 18. Uh, make sure to play it as many times as you need to understand the material. And as always, don't hesitate to email me or con contact me with any questions. Uh, make sure to have filled out the lesson notes and do the accompanying activities. Merci beaucoup. Au revoir.